Welcome to Yacht Fum, where we talk about the women that make the yachting industry. I am your host, Andrea Tagliaferro. Learn who they are, how they got into yachting, and what they do today. Meet Ria Rao, owner and founder of Yachting International Radio. She oversees the production, distribution, and marketing of 15 original weekly shows. Ria created Yachting International Radio two years ago after over two decades of experience in radio, newspaper, and television. Ria looks to disrupt the traditional and outdated world of yachting by providing a voice to others without access to an uncensored platform. She looks to create content that moves the industry forward, championing equality and diversity. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to Yacht Fum. I am super excited for you guys to meet, well, actually, welcome back, Ria. Ria was here already in, um, interviewing me on the episode with Andrea. So today we're welcoming her back to talk about her. She is the founder and CEO of Yachting International Radio. She has her own show as Yacht Crew Vlogs. She also has been a host at yacht shows and other things, and she also has some webinars up her sleeve. So there's tons of stuff going on. Thank you so much for taking the time and meeting up with us today. How are you, Ria? Good, thank you. I feel honored to be here. Thank you, you're being so humble. She is gonna be the first one, uh, the first episode we're publishing in March. It is International Women's Day the 8th, but it's gonna be a full month of us celebrating women. So double whammy, thank you so much. <laughs> So before we uh, jump into everything that you're doing, give us a little bit of background of who you are, um, where you're from, and what do you do in yachting? Well, I am. I was born and raised in uh, Canada. I grew up in a logging yard in northern British Columbia, Canada, and I got into media at the age of 20. Um, so I'm a bit of a redneck, and that's still there. Um, I'm a mother of three kids, um, which is, is sort of my defining role in life, I think. And I didn't even realize that yachting was an industry until I moved to Mallorca about 16 years ago. And when you are an expat or uh, uh, people use expat as, as a word, and, and I, I'm not really, I don't like that. I'm an immigrant, essentially, in Spain. Um, but when you're an immigrant in a country where you don't actually know the language very well, you tend to hang out with other people that speak the same language. And in Mallorca, it tended to be yachties. So 16 years ago really is when I got exposed to the greater yachting industry. Um, and that's how I got into it. I started hanging out with people and then I started helping Lars Molin with the Palmy Yacht Crew as far as um, just moderating his groups. And, and my love of the industry grew from there. So what do you do now, now that you found yachting? Well, now, I saw in yachting that there was a need for equality um, when I would walk the docks and when I was with my friends, I saw that it was very male dominated. I saw that it was very white. Um, there wasn't a lot of diversity. Women had a sell by date much the same as they did in media. Um, and I had always worked for men my entire life as well. And, I had a sell by date and I thought, you know what, it's time to make a change. And it's very difficult to make that change in mainstream media, but I can do that in a niche marketplace, take my skills, apply it to an industry that is filled with amazing people and try to make a bit of a change within that industry and to work for myself for a change and to be able to be the person that says, yes, it's okay to say that on air, the person to provide a voice for others that previously have never had a voice and not censor anybody. We love how you are approaching media. That's one of the reasons I'm <coughs> here with you and I'm happy to be one of the shows on, uh, on your channel. But can you tell us more about what is your role? Because <clears throat> as an insider, I know that not only uh, are you hosting and creating content like one of us, but you're also managing us. Um, cutting up, cleaning out the audios to make sure that everything is the right formats when they are launched and distributed and you guys can easily listen to it on your favorite podcast platform. So what else do you do that people really don't know? Wow, well, it's funny because people sort of think that they create a show and it's just magically appears. 
And as you well know, that is far from the truth. <laughs> every single <Very> show, <laughs> every single show probably takes me between three and four hours. When you talk about receiving the raw product, um, you have to take that and you have to render it into um, a format that is usable throughout all social media. Um, you have to make the file size smaller because you can't upload and download onto different formats unless that file size is small enough. You also have to render it to another format in order to make it podcast only, so audio only. Um, and the editing process, you're not quite sure. You've literally got to, I, I find now that I've gotten it to a stage where I can take a look at the audio lines and see where there might be a problem within the show. Because if I had to listen, I've got three shows airing every single day now. And if I had to listen to each one of those shows all the way through, I, I wouldn't sleep or eat or function in the slightest and I still wouldn't have it all done. So I have mastered the idea of looking at the audio and saying, okay, well, there's something there that isn't right and I've got to check that out. Then you've also got to clean it up as far as the visual. You have to make it more appealing. When I first started Yachting International Radio, I didn't have the tools I have now. I sort of, I, I, I ran out of the gate and, and got it all going and then realized that there was a lot of work that I would have to do behind the scenes. And as time has gone on, we've just passed our two year anniversary. As time has gone on, I've found different apps and some of them thank you to the lovely Andrea, um, but apps that have made it more visually appealing as well. Um, so each bit of that takes time and then you have to promote the shows before they actually air so people know that they're airing. Then when they air, you have to be sat at the computer to make sure that you share them not only on your site, but as well to the masses of audience out there that might not necessarily be on your channel or on the channel of the contributor. You've got to make sure that you reach as many people as you possibly can. Um, and you've just got to watch everything. It, it is, it, it's a process that is ongoing consistently, constantly, and it never really ends. Um, Rhea and I talk at a very wee hours, hoping to take Saturdays off and come back on Sundays to continue to work. Yeah, that's our life. Um, she also mentioned that now she is able to publish three episodes, different three different shows that actually means on a daily basis. So how many shows uh, do you have now under your umbrella? We actually have 15 shows going out per week. So we are a true yachting channel at this stage. Um, I am in chats with four or five other people. We are looking within the next six months to have four or five more shows added to the lineup. Ideally, I would like to have three shows a day, seven days a week. Right now we have three shows a day. Uh, Monday through Friday, and then a show on Saturday. Um, so, and then a few more thrown in sometimes as well. So I want to make it so that it is seven days a week, three shows a day. I find that any more than three shows a day, it becomes oversaturated and people are just not interested in listening. And then they also will unlike because there's too many notifications coming up. Um, so you have to be careful not to overwhelm but you also have to make sure that you've got enough content there that people, there is something for everyone. We're trying to find little things that everybody out there will find something that they can tune into that actually pertains to the industry and that they feel they can connect to. Um, from now, you've been in the industry just, well, for a couple of years, right? Not only have you been in the industry, you also are always listening to our story, so you're gathering so much content, so much data in your head. Where do you see the industry going and what changes have you seen in it? Well, in the 16 years that I've been sort of on the peripheral, as it were, in yachting, um, I have seen yachting change hugely. 16 years ago, you could possibly grab somebody off the local bar stool and stick them on your yacht and off you'd go working. Probably not that bad. 20 years ago, but nowadays there's so many more courses. There's so much more investment that goes into it. There are younger and younger crew from all over the world that are flooding the marketplace. The amount of yachties, green crew that are showing up, trying to dock walk, et cetera. You, you have one job that is advertised on social media and you get 200 responses. I mean, 16 years ago, that didn't happen. You would have 10 or 15. 
So we are now, we're now looking at the average ultra high net worth individual being 48 years of age. They've been married for 10 years. They've got three kids. We see the industry has been shuffling more towards excursion yachts. They are more environmentally aware. They are more diverse. Um, in the United States alone, luxury travel for the black marketplace was $100 billion in 2018. Now, the marketplace is changing for those that are coming into yachting, for those that are taking advantage of the yachting services. But the yachting industry itself isn't understanding that. And they're not changing to make sure that they include or become inclusive of this new ultra high net worth individual. And if they don't do that in 10 years, they're going to find that they don't have an industry any longer. It's time to wake up and it's time to make those changes and it's time to start marketing to those people that are actually have the money and that are the next generation millennials, for example. They are the generation, they are the Uber generation. If you're talking yacht charter, they are not gonna be the, the yacht buyers. They are gonna be the yacht charters because they are the Uber generation. They would rather charter a yacht for a week, two weeks, a month, even six months but they don't want the headache of having to hang on to a yacht and paying all the, the refurb fees and everything else that goes along with it and the staff headaches or crew headaches, et cetera. They want to rent it. They want to charter it. And then they want to go back home to their lovely lives as well. We are seeing a shift in the marketplace as far as women, um, $72 trillion of the world's wealth is controlled by women now. That means that women are at the forefront of making these decisions. And I saw a report not too long ago and on the front cover, there was 49, sorry, there was 49 people and 12 of them were women. There was not a single person of color on that cover and the rest were white men. And we were told that that was reflective of the buyers in the market today. If $72 trillion is controlled by women in the world today of, of the marketplace, of, of the money, the wealth in the world, I think that's wrong. And when you take a look at the stats coming out of the states of those that actually have control of wealth, once again, that is wrong. We know marketing, we will buy what we see reflected. And if we don't see ourselves reflected, we're not going to buy what you're selling. And so that is the future of the industry. We have to start changing. We have to start looking at the marketplace. We have to start doing our research. We have to understand that it is a different marketplace than it was 20 years ago. And if we don't change, we're not going to have a market left. But, you know, I think, I think we're looking at, at a new industry and the fact that we are really aware of what we're doing to the planet. Um, and combined, we are, you see it in yachting right now too. I mean, people are talking about becoming carbon neutral. Um, we're really, really taking steps. You see a yacht, I think it was about three months ago, I saw a story in the Rob Report, um, a yacht that was built entirely out of uh, recycled products. Um, and it was an excursion yacht. So we are doing more than the nod that we have been doing in the past 10 years. We are now actually making it a reality within yachting that we are paying attention. And, and a lot of that is driven by the owners coming into the industry and the crew that are coming into the industry at a younger age. Yeah, I couldn't have said it better myself. Um, those people that are coming into the industry are definitely seeing a different landscape than when we uh, integrated yachting. With that in mind, if you were starting yachting today, uh, what advice would you give yourself? If I was starting yachting today, be careful because it's not, a lot of schools now are, are sort of selling yachting as the dream. You're going to travel the world. You're gonna be sitting on deck and sipping champagne and seeing every you know marina around the face of the planet. And that's not real. Imagine that you are just on a floating houseboat and you've got a toothbrush in your hand and you have to clean a toilet um, because that's pretty much what it is for the first few years. So. 
put all your expectations aside. Yes, you will get paid well, um, but expect to work for it. Make sure that when you start making that money, it's not gonna last forever. So look at ways to invest and beware that there are some people out there that are looking to take your money, not help you invest it, no matter how nice they smile or how well they dress. Um, but all in all, yachting is a wonderful industry. It's got wonderful people that are involved. Everybody is willing to help each other out when needs be. Um, and, and you couldn't meet a better group of people, I think, than those that are in the yachting industry but you have to be prepared. I'm going to take that compliment like you mean it to me, but okay. <laughs> yes, well, you're one of them for sure. <laughs> Rhea, um, there's so much information of you online, of course, because you've done so many interviews now. Um, but is there something that we don't know that you can share with us? No, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty straightforward. I am who I am and uh, there's not much hidden um all over the map and some of those that really know me know where i have been and where i've come from and how i've pulled myself up by my bootstraps and gotten to where i am today and i'm not where i want to be yet but i'll get there um before we head off ria how can we reach you how can we stay in touch with you well we've got uh, our website yachting international radio of course we are on every podcast known to my to to, to mankind yachting international radio um any just enter yachting international radio into google and it will all come up um the only difference is twitter would not allow us yachting international radio so we are yachting radio because it was too long um and if you want to email it's info at yachting international radio.com so yeah, it's, it's fairly easy if you're looking for us. And she is quite active on Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, and almost all the social media platforms. But if you write on any of those three, she will hop on and answer right away. So if you have any interest on, for example, sponsoring one of the many shows, sponsoring all the shows, reach out to her. She's always there to talk. She's been in the industry for many, many years, even before yachting. So she does know how media works how to get the best value for the people, for the listeners, and anyone who wants to invest time in Yachting International Radio. Um, well, and the one thing that I do want to notice, want to state too, is that with the shows, when we have sponsorship, my firm belief is that 50% of that income goes directly to my contributors, because without the contributors, I wouldn't have a Yachting channel. I wouldn't have the valuable content that we have here today. And all of these people are X crew. All of these people are people that have worked in the auto industry. And every single one of them is just as valuable as what it is that I do. And I feel that they should be supported equally. Thank you so much. Yes, I'm one of the ones that actually worked in the industry. I get all, everybody on her team does, uh, has worked in yachting. Um, Ria, thank you so much for taking the time. I know there's a time difference here. I'm in the midday, so I'm, I'm still have energy. She's already winding down. It's so, it's a Friday and everything. So thank you so much for taking time to talk to us. No, thank you, Andrea. It's been an absolute pleasure. And you know what? Your show, Yacht Femme, is one of my favorites, and it highlights some absolutely amazing women. Um, and I am just truly blessed that you asked me to be part of it and that I can I can actually say that I've been interviewed by the same person as all these other wonderful women so thank you thank you so much for listening to the odd funk if you like what you heard please like subscribe and comment your comment will help us reach a broader audience and don't miss the next